When we read stories like Job 2, it's easy to get hung up on the heavenly beings and the introduction of the Shatan character. But it's important for us to remember that the story is all about teaching the original hearers something about God. And and Job is a call to trust God and not expect a reward for faithful living or blame God when things go wrong. In Job 2, we meet those anthropomorphized characters, God and the Shatan, or Satan, as we like to say in English. And they have human features, even though these attributes contradict the rest of Scripture. This part of the prologue serves as a meet-cute This is a term that screenwriters use to describe a situation in which two future characters meet in an interesting way. It's common in romantic comedies. The boy and the girl are in the grocery store and both reach for canned carrots. Oh, hello, who are you? We have our meet cute. Job 2 isn't a meet cute between Job and anyone else. It's between us and God. Because that's the transformational relationship. Even at the start, we see God indicating that to the shaitan, that this is no simple transaction where Job praises God in exchange for blessings. And this other heavenly being doesn't buy it. And the plot thickens. We can see where this is going to go. Something is going to happen to Job. In fact, lots of things happen to him. But for right now, we're right here in Job 2, right in the prologue, trying to understand what we're to make, not only of this strange little story in our Bible, but our own relationship with God in this world in this broken, struggling world, this place where people face difficulties of all kinds, sometimes challenges that we we can't understand or articulate or find a cause, the journey leads to some very important questions. When we start to look at our faith in, in light of the world, we can ask what it means to trust God. Or what does it mean to have a relationship with God? Or or what should we be expecting from that relationship? Gustavo Gutierrez writes about what he calls a barter concept of religion. Remember, barter, trading goods for services or other goods. That's what I call and commonly refer to as a transactional faith. Gutierrez writes... Can human beings truly have a disinterested faith in God? Can can we believe in God without looking for rewards or fearing some kind of punishment? Even more specifically, are we capable, in the midst of unjust suffering, of continuing to have faith and to speak praise to God without expecting something back. Satan and with him, all those who have a barter concept of religion deny this possibility. The author of Job, on the contrary, believes it not only is possible, but knew that it would be very difficult, especially when people confront suffering. Whether it's our own, or even the vicarious suffering we feel when we see others struggle. Job becomes God's spokesperson. Too often in in our culture, we don't find examples of complete trust in God. And, And there's even a common worldview for some people that if you suffer, you had to have done something. And we see that framed in all kinds of hurtful ways. I've never seen it used constructively. I've never seen an example of somebody trying to tease out, well, what did you do 
where it's at all pastoral or reflecting the Piezu we just heard. Our faith isn't an exchange. We don't trade something with God. We don't say, I'll follow you if you keep me safe. I mean, sailors say all the time, I will go to church every Sunday if you just get me through this storm. That's not what we're talking about. That kind of trade, that barter concept of a relationship with God falls short of the transformation we see in Christ. We sing those words of acclamation or hear them sung so, so beautifully. Piezu, in English, pious Jesus, who takes away the sins of the world, give them rest. I fill in the, the blank, give them, those who suffer, those who struggle, those who face trouble of any kind, those who are struggling to try to make sense of what's going on, give them rest. In the second refrain, from our anthem, Agnes Day. Again, in English, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, give them rest. Give them everlasting rest. The peace of knowing God goes beyond a transactional faith or a barter concept of knowing God. We're still going to experience real life. We're still going to have bad days, even see horrors, or even tragically experience them. When we do, though, we can try to see God's presence in the midst of whatever happens. We can try to find the little glimpses of the light of Christ. We can look for joy because we know that we have a loving Savior who is with us, in the midst of whatever troubles we face, not causing it. We don't make a deal with God. In Job, we learn about that. We also learn about trust and putting complete faith in God. Today, in the words of our liturgies, our collects, our confessions, our praises and our songs, we acknowledge the world we live in. And we trust God is with us right there in the thick of it. Amen.